Hi. Uh, fine, thanks. Uh, so uh, the, the earlier presentation in, in the other room was uh, about what Wikisource is in general and uh, what features that does it have, what, what features it should have. Uh, this will be a, a very short presentation about uh, some examples of actual projects that uh, were done by me and by people I know uh, on uh, Wikisource and uh, uh, the, the whole problem with, of Wikisource is that it's, um, it has very little, it gets very little attention in general um, and people who do know about it, uh, they think that, well, it's for public domain books. Public domain books are usually very old books and, uh, well, it's sometimes useful to to search for maybe Sherlock Holmes stories there, uh, which are public domain, or for Alice in Wonderland, which is a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, not much else, and uh, actually there is uh, much else. Um, so uh, I'm presenting this as a wiki sorcerer. That's uh, like a Wikipedia, for, for those of you who haven't heard the, the term. We, we are wiki sorcerers. Uh, I also happen to work in the Wikimedia Foundation, um, uh, working on internationalization issues, but that's not what this presentation is about. Uh, so, a few examples. So, Encyclopedia Britannica, we all heard about it. Um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it had a very famous edition in 1911. Uh, it's public domain now. Uh, there is a project at Wikisource, in the English Wikisource, of course, to uh, transcribe all of it, all, all its volumes, to, to have a digital version of it. Uh, now, why is it useful? Uh, we have newer online Britannica now. We have Wikipedia. Why would we need uh, to transcribe the old uh, Encyclopedia Britannica? So the answer, th there are several answers. Why is it useful? So for example, the article Ku Klux Klan uh, in 1911, it says that uh, Ku Klux Klan was successful in placing the southern whites under the control of a party composed principally of ex-slaves. It was, it, it, was, it was successful in reducing the blacks to order. So put mildly, this is, <laughs> this is somewhat not neutral. Um, but, well, it has historical interest. Uh, let's, well, it, you know, things change, views change. It, it has historical interest. Now, beyond historical interest, um, Let's, let's take a look at the article about Heinrich Friedrich Wilhelm Gesenius, uh, which is a German linguist from the 19th century. He wrote a very famous uh, grammar book of Hebrew. Um, if, if we take the article about him in the 1911 edition, it has uh, almost 5,000 bytes. If we take a look at the article about him in the current online edition, it's much smaller. Um, now, I don't really know why, uh, because uh, we, we all know this rule that uh, Wikipedia is not made of paper, so we are not bound by any, if, if it's, we're not bound by, by paper, we're not by, bound by anything physical. Uh, if it's useful, we just write it. Um, uh, Britannica editors, uh, my, my guess is that they just made it shorter in, in, in one of the subsequent paper editions and didn't bother to make it longer again when they released the online version. So noticing things like that uh, is very useful. We are basically restoring Britannica's old glory. Uh, obviously, the, the, the current article in the English Wikipedia is based on the old version of the Britannica, uh, of the Britannica, of the Britannica article with some more additions. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not saying this to say, hey, Britannica sucks and the Wikipedia is better. Not at all, Britannica is a wonderful encyclopedia. I'm just saying this, hey, let's take a look at the older versions of Britannica and see how we can use them today. They are useful. Um, uh, so as uh, the great philosopher Neil Young said in the song, Ride My Llama, it's old, but it's good. Uh, and if we uh, speak a little more about uh, Gesenius, uh, it, well, it's, it's, it's a very hard example because is there anybody who happens to know Hebrew here? A few people, okay. Um, so uh, that Gizenius guy, he, in the 19th century, he wrote a very famous book of Hebrew, uh, of Hebrew grammar. It's still used by universities today. Um, and uh, he's cute baby face. Um, 
so you can see here that uh, you, you don't really have to know Hebrew letters to understand this. Uh, you see this word here? dots around here. Uh, it's basically made possible to see this. Uh, well, I, I made some tricks in, in the presentation, but at the actual English Wikisource website, you're able to see all these dots uh, thanks to WebFonts technology, uh, which is developed uh, by the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, if without this WebFonts technology, you see something like this. Uh, and you don't really need to know Hebrew to see that it's kind of off the mark. Um, and this is the right thing. Uh, th th these dots are very important for representing Biblical Hebrew. They're less important for modern Hebrew. Uh, but this actually makes it readable. And um, uh, I, I'll give another example of how it, well, it, well, it's obvious to me, but it may not be obvious to you. Uh, in printed books, it was very easy to do because uh, the typographer would just pick up characters and put them manually on the page. It would take a lot of time, but it would be very precise and beautiful. In computers, it's apparently hard. <laughs> and um, uh, thanks to WebFonts technologies, it's, it's made possible. And um, professors of Hebrew today, they're, they're reading this and they say, oh, the, the wiki source edition of that book is good and useful uh, for our students. Uh, another example is that uh, well, the same book, it should have been a website, uh, basically. Uh, what do I mean by a website? It was re released 100 years ago. Um, if you'll see here, this, this is basically how, the, how editing Wikisource looks like, if you, if you haven't tried it uh, ever. Uh, that, uh, on that side, that's the scanned page from the old book. Uh, on that side, this is the actual editing. Uh, so there's an extension, a media wiki extension called proofread page, which uh, shows you uh, the old scan text and the uh, current transcription side by side. And you can see that uh, this is, well, this is a scientific textbook, a reference work. It has lots of cross references to other parts in the book, to other paragraphs. Uh, so when you read it, you have to flip pages all the time, back and forth, to, to, to see the other paragraph, uh, what, what is discussed there. Uh, I just wrote some bots and some scripts, and uh, is anybody here familiar with a tool called AutoWiki Browser? Yeah, great. So AutoWiki Browser was very helpful there. I wrote some regular expressions, some, some tricks, and I just went over all of the book, and I found these uh, paragraph marks and converted them into hyperlinks. And when I show this to people, to teachers of, of Hebrew, they say, oh my god, no more flipping pages, I just click the link. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, well, I, can, I, can, I actually do talks about this in, in universities and in, in, in schools, and uh, people are really impressed about that. And I, uh, without, any, uh, well, without any hard effort from my side, um, I'm, I'm receiving emails from people in Barcelona, in Leipzig, in Melbourne, of course in Tel Aviv, and also in uh, New York. Uh, professors uh, telling me, I'm using this for my students, and this is very convenient, and my students love it, and I love it. So uh, that's basically what we are, one of the things that we are doing here, one of the less obvious things, we are bringing knowledge to people, this is one yet another way of bringing knowledge to people. Uh, so normal flipping pages as much as we love it, and I do love it. I, I have the same book in print at home, I, I bought it, I paid money for it. When I actually want to find something there, I very often use the paper book, but very often I use the digital version. Uh, so some ideas for the future that I have for this book, and of course, all I can say about this book can apply to any other grammar book and to any other reference book from the, from the, well, from the present too, if it's compatible from the copyright uh, uh, point of view. Uh, but it's mo it mostly applies to all public domain books. There are plenty of old books. Go over the library of your university. You, you, you will see so many wonderful 100-year-old, 200-year-old books which are still useful and relevant. Um, and you'll see that uh, many, many of them uh, have footnotes and references to other books and to other journals. So this particular book actually has references to, to other journals about the Middle East and about Hebrew and the uh, archaeology and mm, whatever you uh, think about. These journals are actually available online. Um, it, was, it, it makes me very happy to say that uh, the German and British societies for research in the Middle East 
they uh, uh, many of them actually are still in existence for after more than 100 years. They have uh, their journals scanned and published online. Not all of them, but some of them. I found them. Uh, my my next plan. That's the my my my, uh, my plan is to uh, transcribe them too and to link them because that's what it was supposed to be because a uh, hundred years ago you would just have this book and then oh I want to check the, what this article says and you would go to the library again you will find the journal you will flip the pages and find it now you can have hyperlinks it does require some work you have to transcribe you have to add the hyperlinks but eventually you reviving this uh, tradition and all the current scholarship on that is based on that tradition M making things useful again make, making things alive again uh, so that was another example of how Wikisource can be useful in some unexpected ways. Uh, one for the last example, I'd like to talk about the Malayalam Wikisource. Malayalam is a language spoken in southern India. Uh, Wikisource is obviously uh, can be done in any language. For that, I would like to invite Santosh Totingal to present this. Thank you. Thanks, Amit. Um, my name is Sandosh. I'm from Malayalam Wikisource. Malayalam Wikisource is as famous as Malayalam Wikipedia. We get lots of media attention, and we have many active editors just like Malayalam Wikisource, Wik Wikipedia. So um, I just want to share some of the best practices and achievements uh, uh, in the past. Uh, some of them are, uh, are models that can be replicated across Wikisources. So, um, one important thing is mon many of the Wikisource editors in Malayalam are school teachers. So they are from the high schools. And uh, fortunately, um, in schools, students have to learn how to type Malayalam uh, before going to the high schools. So they know how to type in Malayalam. And there are uh, they have to learn about wiki culture and Wikipedia in their eighth standard, which is something like eighth grade or something like that. It's the beginning of the high school. And they have exercises to type Malayalam and all. So the um, teachers who are editors in Malayalam Wikisource, what they do is they get the scanned copy of the old books. They give to the students. So if there are some 40 students or 50 students in a class, and if they share the pages, like I take three pages, you take the another three pages, and they transcribe it in using the pre proofread extension just, just, just within 30 minutes or something and by one week we will be digitizing one book so um, like that within an academic year we were able to digitize uh, uh, many books which are you know uh, Malayalam doesn't have a very big um, history of uh, printing technology it's uh, just a two mo uh, at most it's uh, just a 200 years uh, printing technology started just uh, some somewhere around uh, 19th century and it says small language young language but uh, th this works very well and uh, once we transcribe one a very old book a historical book um, we also make sure that they get enough fame the students get uh, um, enough fame by uh, contacting the news reporters and saying that uh, see the st students from this school transcribed this many books and uh, as part of their um, education and so it's a it, so uh, another school comes and they says that we have this book and we will do it in one week. So it's very easy. It's not a um, big task because if 50 students share a, pay, a book with a 500 pages or something with a, just a three four pages in a day, it works very well. So this practice is um, something uh, we can do in all wiki sources. So I just wanted to share this one. And one another uh, achievement we did last year is, you know, uh, even though internet is reaching uh, more and more people nowadays, but uh, it's uh, it's not that much fast as far as India is concerned or um, my my own state Kerala is concerned. So. Uh, because of all the efforts by school teachers and active wiki source editors, we have a very big digital collection of all the Malayalam books, and which is bigger than any library uh, in uh, in my state in Malayalam. So what we did is we wanted to make sure that uh, this big source of knowledge, collection of digital archive, to reach all the people even without internet connection. So we created an offline edition of wiki source. I, uh, I think we were the first 
uh, wiki source to do that and offline wiki source i just want to show that um, this is just the online browsable version of that um, uh, offline edition. Uh, we distributed all the books that are done, all the proofreading is done. We, we compiled into a CD and we, um, um, we we did some mashup of the content and uh, the interface looks like this, not like the Wikipedia. This is just a standalone uh, HTML RK with lots of Java source and everything. So, uh, you know, it's a categories. It, this is like a novels. So this is one novel. You you get novel and you you have all the chapters and there are some navigation controls. And one another thing is um, you know font is again a problem for people. Um, people will be seeing the Malayalam in their computer maybe for the first time. So we want to make sure that they have enough technology, enough phones and everything in your in their system. So, so that uh, you know, uh, we give web phone technology here. So these are the phones. So they can change the phones. Even even if they are, if, even if they don't have phones in their system. So it's uh, it's just out of the box. It works. They just need to insert the CD. Um, it works. That's it. So th this is our second edition in Malayalam. We had done uh, Wiki Wikipedia offline edition also um, at, in 2000. Nine. And uh, all these contents, we are working closely with uh, the education department of the state and they distribute this offline edition to all schools. And uh, we are encouraging them to share and copy and share to all their neighbors. So uh, Wikipedia is not residing only in the internet. Uh, we are Wikisource and Wikipedia, we are making sure that the content is available to all of the people, not limited to internet. So that's it, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to uh, take a lot of time from the next panel, so just a couple of quick questions, if anybody has any. How did you create the city? You know? Oh, that's a question for Santosh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a, uh, 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 it's not something something reusable, it's just a lots of Python-based uh, scripts and shell scripts. We just extract the content and um, uh, it's it's I uh, and just to compile auto it's not manual like actually it's the uh, scripts and uh, uh, it's not readily reusable for other languages because I didn't consider to make write it in a reusable way uh, but recently Tamil Wikipedia is considering uh, reusing the scripts by doing some modification but if anybody wants I can share the scripts it's not published anywhere but I have it I can share it Yeah, I attended the talk. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, because I think that this uh, format is uh, useful only on computers, yes, not on, on, on other kind of devices, because you have all this frame. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's, a, it's possible. I, I, I didn't put uh, so far, but uh, when I wrote about this in my blog, I said if anybody wants the script, I can share. It's not readily usable. I need to give some specific instructions because this we did uh, within a one, one month time, and I didn't spend time in making it reusable or uh, making it general. In which language do you blog? Sorry? In which language do you blog? English. So uh, thanks a lot for, for being here. Uh, we're around if you have any questions about Wikisource, about uh, uh, internationalization, about fonts, please talk to us. Thank you. <coughs> well, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Pavel. I'm from Wikimedia Germany. And uh, we are here to talk about Wikidata and what it can do, what it means, and can do for you. Um, <laughs> Before I uh, introduce the panel and we're going to start uh, the actual event, there is an announcement to make because um, we had a little competition going on about uh, finding a logo uh, for Wikidata because Wikidata is a new project and uh, we had an international uh, call for participation. Um, and let's see if I get this. Yeah. 
and we got uh, more than 70 um, uh, proposals and uh, 33 out of them were put to a vote uh, which lasted for I believe two weeks and um, we got uh, nearly a thousand votes um, on the um, proposals and uh, we finally picked a winner. Uh, it was picked by the community and the winner is Wikidata. <laughs> and I am delighted I am delighted that user Plain Mad, uh, also known as Arun Ganesh, is here. Arun, can you please come? Can you please come to the to the front? He came up. <laughs> he came up. He came up with the idea, and I would like to ask you uh, if you could talk a little bit about what it is, what we see here. But uh, first of all, congratulations. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much for your So, Wikidata was, uh, I have personal interest in Wikidata. I, I work a lot with map data and coordinates, and this is something which I know would bring everything together. So, when I was reading more about Wikidata and I saw there was a logo competition, I thought, ooh, wow, let's see what the <laughs> logos look like. And I saw the logos and I thought, oh. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I thought I could probably do something which I would like to see as the face of Wikidata. And uh, I'm, I'm not a sucker for visual logos, but more of data graphics. I like charts, I like graphs, things which you can learn something from or it tells you something. So that's when I was thinking about data and communication. Uh, and so one thing which struck me was Morse code, like an early form of communication. and. Yeah, it's language agnostic. Uh, so I thought, okay, how would Wiki uh, or Wikidata look like in Morse code? So I looked up the Morse code table in Wikipedia, and I put Wiki in like Morse, and it looked pretty okay. And it looked like a bar graph. Uh, it seemed like something universally identifiable as a data graphic, and that was pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it took me more time to upload it to Commons and uh, <laughs> have the credit. <laughs> And have the correct licensing. I think it was up for uh, there was a there was a notice on it that I hadn't put some template something like that. <laughs> so, so that took more time and more effort than actual logo itself. But I'm very happy that it got selected and went through the voting process. So I'm glad you all liked it. Thanks. And yeah, don't forget your props. <laughs> Okay, so here's one thing what Wikidata can do for you. You can uh, uh, become a logo designer, um, <laughs> and, um, but this one is finished. Uh, we are done with that. Uh, but there's plenty of more things uh, exciting about Wikidata, and we're here to talk about it a little bit, but mostly we're here to answer questions. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick round uh, around the, the table. I introduce everybody here. Everybody will make a, a little statement, and then it's up to you. Ask questions what Wikidata means to you, or make a statement what Wikimedia, uh, Wikidata means to you. Um, so my name is Pavel, I'm from Wikimedia Germany, as I already said. Lydia here is uh, from Wikimedia Germany as well. She is um, the uh, community communications uh, person for Wikidata. Daniel uh, is the lead software architect uh, for Wikidata. Uh, Eric is from the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, uh, and uh, Danny is uh, the program director of uh, Wikidata. And uh, well, here we are. And I'd like to ask uh, Danny to start to talk a little bit about what Wikidata is. So I will give a very short introduction to what Wikidata is. We gave yesterday a much longer one, and um, I guess that there's quite an uh, overlap in the audience. The first idea of Wikidata is actually to, um, to provide a centralized place for the language links. So instead of having in every single language edition of every single article having language links to every other one, we will all move them to Wikidata and allow the, com uh, allow the Wikipedias to actually draw them from the central source, meaning that there will be much less boss bot activity on those pages, that the articles will become crisper and shorter and easier to edit because they don't have this long list of things at the end and um, all this. <coughs> we hope that we'll, that we'll start this already this summer. Um, the second phase of Wikidata is to provide actual data. Um, meaning things that the info boxes are using. So whenever you see an info box and you click on edit, you usually get this scary long call to a template with a lot of data inside and so on. And you you have to scroll down like one or two pages before you can actually get to the article. 
The idea would be that as much of this data can be moved to Wikidata, for example, populations, who is the mayor, when was this uh, country founded, who wrote this book, uh, who's the director of this movie, etc., etc. And then we have a template that simply calls Wikidata, asks for this data, and displays it inside of the info box. And this has also the advantage that there would be one Wikidata for all the languages meaning that the French, the English, Wikipedia, and also the, um, the small Wikipedia languages, uh, the, um, like uh, Malay, like um, uh, Varai Varai, and so on, would all be updated uh, at the same time, and um, the data would be consistent over all of them. So this is the rough idea about what Wikidata can provide. And I guess you have a lot of questions after that. Yeah, so if I can ask Daniel to um, talk a little bit about the software architecture. Yeah, OK, that works. Well, um, I don't want to go into the technical details too much. I um, did that yesterday. Uh, right now, I want to give you a brief overview of uh, what we have been doing the last couple of months and what we are going to do in the next couple of months. Um, the project is split into phases, and the first phase is mainly about centralizing the storage and management of the interlanguage links. So, um, as Danny mentioned, uh, these don't have to be maintained on each page in every language anymore. Uh, so, this is an extremely important first step, but of course, it's not. Y there's not that much to see there. So, we have spent a lot of time. Um, getting all the stuff holding up, um, implementing the infrastructure we need to handle, um, well, to, to manage the centralization of the data and getting the data then to the wikis that are going to use it. And we have been implementing the management of the interlanguage links. Um, <coughs> we hope to be able to deploy this late in the summer or uh, early fall. This all depends on um, how long it will take to get uh, the code reviewed by the Wikimedia Foundation, how long it will take to get this into the deployment schedule, and so on. Uh, but we hope to have this online pretty soon, at least for, for uh, one or two projects. So we are going to introduce it gradually. Um, I know, I, I think we already have a candidate, but I'm not sure if I yes, am free to mention that. Yeah, There have been some uh, discussions with, uh, with the Hungarian Wikipedia uh, over the last couple of days, so uh, it is possible that this will be the first place where this will be used. As to... Yeah, so it depends on the vote of the Hungarian community, obviously. We had discussions with a number of uh, administrators who were very excited about this. They still have to go through the normal processes of the uh, Wikipedia and, and decide actually on that. So it, may be Hungary. it may be, but we really don't know. It depends on the, it depends on the community to decide. This Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> not on this community to decide. It depends on the Hungarian Wikipedia community. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is actually true for pretty much everything about Wikidata. We are going to offer a service, but uh, the, the local Wikipedias will always be free to use all or parts or nothing of it as they, as they please on a page-by-page page basis or for the entire project, whatever the community decides. Um, as to the next steps, I think over the next couple of months, we have uh, a lot of things to do. The second phase uh, is probably the most visible one. It's the one that deals with the actual info box data. Uh, so we have to implement um, all the, basically the ways to input the information you currently see in the info boxes, no longer as somehow marked up wiki text, but as structured data using forms. Um, and we have we also have to implement a way to actually extract and show that data on the wiki pages. So basically, the, the ways to construct info boxes from from the information on wiki data. This is um, on the one hand. On the other hand, we will also be working on integrating the editing more strongly with the individual sites, with the Wikipedia's where the uh, data will be used. Uh, this is true, of course, for the info boxes. Basically. Uh, one, uh, if, if you see an info box that uses information from Wikidata, you will have an edit link in the info box, and if you click that edit link, you will have a pop-up on the page where you can edit. Uh, people will not have to think about being on Wikisource or anything like that if they don't want to. Of course, there are technical issues with this, uh, like single sign-on and things like that. Um, 
we have also make we also have to make sure that people are able to find the relevant discussion page when they want to talk about something. Uh, but that that is not such a big deal. But the on the on-site editing aspect is um, also something we also of course have to think about or want to think about for the interlanguage links. So basically to add another add another uh, article to the list of languages um, or the list of articles in different languages that cover a specific topic, uh, you, you should not have to go to the Wikidata project itself on the long run. We will, it, it will be like that in the beginning, um, <laughs> simply because we want to deploy the features we have now early on so we can get feedback as soon as possible. But in the long run, all this should be possible on site. And this is also something we will be working on over the next couple of months. And on the midterm, by the end of the year, very early next year, uh, we will be working on and hopefully deploying ways to automatically generate lists. Basically query the data we have on Wikidata to um, produce the list of, I don't know, all the towns with more than 10,000 people in uh, the state of New York or something like that. Um, that will be phase three, which will hopefully be deployed um, spr in, in spring of 2013. So. Well, thank you, Daniel. <coughs> I would like to talk a little bit about um, the organizational part of uh, Wikidata because it is unusual, um, um, not only from a technical perspective, but from an organizational part as well. It's run by Wikimedia Germany, a chapter uh, of the Wikimedia movement. and. Um, well, it's a huge undertaking for us. Uh, it's more than a quarter of our staff works on, uh, exclusively on Wikidata, and uh, it's, uh, it has a 1.3 million uh, euro budget, which is huge. Uh, and the financing side of it is interesting as well because uh, it's not funded out of the regular fundraising, fund drive, fundraiser, um, but it, uh, we approached um, um, a couple of large um, uh, donors and uh, foundations. So we have three partners who are uh, supporting Wikidata uh, with their donations. Uh, Paul Allen um, of uh, Microsoft fame and riches is uh, one of them, and he gives uh, the largest part of it. Um, the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation um, of the founder of Intel um, and his wife are giving a large part to this, and uh, Google is supporting uh, Wikimedia Germany in the development of Wikidata as well. So these are the people who are the organizations and companies that are supporting um, uh, us in doing this. And this is very exciting for us because we have never done this before. We have never uh, approached people about uh, these amounts of money. And uh, um, so this is very, uh, very interesting uh, for us yet. Um, even so, the uh, uh, Wikidata is run by uh, and, and uh, operated by, um, it's run by, the project is run by Wikimedia Germany. Uh, we could not and want, do not want to do this uh, without the Wikimedia Foundation because it was actually Eric who approached me um, uh, more than a year ago and uh, made the suggestion that Wikimedia Germany is taking the lead on Wikidata because uh, the Wikimedia Foundation with the uh, visual editor, the um, uh, mobile project, uh, the new data, data center has had it played full and uh, but wanted to see Wikidata to be uh, implemented and not to be postponed indefinitely. So they approached us and asked if we would be willing to do that. And I believe that this is a very interesting model um, for other chapters, for other organizations as well, um, because it shows how, uh, how local chapters can uh, be involved in global development work and can make a global impact uh, by what they do. And um, uh, Wikimedia, so f this, is, uh, this is, I believe, a very interesting uh, aspect of Wikidata as well. And um, uh, so far, the cooperation with the Wikimedia Foundation, which will run Wikidata. So let's be clear about this. Once we have done it, uh, all the code, all the domains, um, uh, everything goes to the Wikimedia Foundation, and they will actually be in charge of running uh, wiki uh, data, which makes sense because they're uh, running all the projects and that's what they are there for. So um, this is, uh, I believe that there's um, uh, a very good cooperation right now with the, with the Wikimedia Foundation. I believe this could be a very interesting model for other chapters and for other projects, large and small as well. So that's the part I would like to focus on. And now I'd like to ask Eric um, to talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> Gladly. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, so I, I actually want to ask the, the people in the audience, uh, how many of you have no affiliation with either a chapter or the Wikimedia Foundation or any other Wikimedia organization? Okay, so that's quite a lot of you. So if you're ever wondering what is all this bureaucracy good for, <laughs> this is what it is good for. It's good for... Yep 
running organizations that have the ability to approach partners like Google and Paula Allen uh, and say, we want to build this infrastructure that's going to be amazing and useful for the free and open source movement, for the free knowledge community, uh, for humanity, uh, are you willing to help us? And uh, so uh, we as the Wikimedia Foundation don't have the capability and the capacity to do all those things. Uh, so working with lots and uh, lots of partners in the movement is a great way to do more things. And uh, as Pavel said, uh, I, I'm uh, pretty excited about this uh, pioneering model. Wikimedia Germany has always been a pioneering organization in the Wikimedia movement. It was uh, the organization that invented the tool server. It created many of the first outreach campaigns. So it's uh, um, no accident uh, that Wikimedia Germany is also the first chapter that's uh, uh, taking on a very large software engineering project. And uh, I would love to see other chapters do the same. And so what I had suggested to Pavel originally was that maybe one vision of how this could work is that uh, chapters develop specific areas of competency where they really uh, um, build out engineering talent because you can't be good at everything. Uh, no organization is going to be good at everything, including the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, and for Wikimedia Germany, for, for example, to be the center of excellence for all things structured data could make a lot of sense uh, for another chapter to be the center of excellence for all things multimedia or all things Wikisource might make a lot of sense. Uh, it actually uh, makes geographic sense in the case of uh, Wikimedia Germany as well, given that uh, a ton of the uh, semantic web and uh, semantic wiki efforts originated in Germany. DBpedia, semantic media wiki, uh, a lot of those efforts actually have their origins in either academia in Germany or among individuals uh, in Germany. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited that this has come together. I hope that it's not going to just end uh, in uh, 2013, but that we'll find ways to uh, to continue it instead of just, hey, we're coming up in Asia now. <laughs> <laughs> Structured data is your problem. <laughs> so, so it would, would be nice if we could indeed continue to expand uh, capabilities uh, through Wikimedia Germany, but I'm, I'm very excited about this project being underway and we're behind it 100%. Thank you, Eric. Uh, we Germans are just mad about structured data, as you know. <laughs> if you didn't know. Um, okay, Lydia. Um, I don't want to take away too much of the uh, time for questions, but I want to mention one more thing. Um, as you've seen uh, with the logo, um, we want to do a lot with the community, and we want to have a lot of involvement from all of you and the rest of the uh, Wikimedians and Wikipedians. Um, so now you have the chance to talk to us also uh, after this panel and um, during the conference on su uh, Sunday, for example. Um, grab us and find out how you can um, be a part of that. Thanks. Well, questions. There, is, there are microphones uh, in the room, and I'd ask you to use them uh, for the sake of the cameras. Camera. All right, so I don't know if this is like too obvious of a use case for Wikidata because I really haven't heard anyone actually explicitly say this, but it seems like this is one thing it's going to be doing. So let me just describe this and tell me if I'm completely off base. So you have an image on Commons, and just you know one file, and Wikidata has all the Dublin Core data on that file, so that when someone downloads that file and the metadata attaches all the copyright information and the attribution in machine-readable format, and all the places that use that would pull it off of commons that aren't necessarily, or even the other wikis, would be able to, in a machine-readable way, present the copyright information, which was always a problem we've always had with commons. And Wikidata will solve that problem, is what I'm thinking. It seems like this is hand in hand, but I've never heard anyone explicitly say that. So tell me, am I off base? You're yes, and <laughs> yes and no. Uh, wiki, wi the Wikidata project as a wiki project is not going to address this simply because it really has not much to do with commons. One thing it will do for commons is provide uh, the data about authors and creators that are currently maintained on, on, on uh, commons in, in the creator namespace. For image metadata, um, image metadata is pretty much, well, it is metadata. Uh, wiki, Wikidata is not about metadata. Um, it is about source statements about properties of things. Um, however, I very much wish that 
what you described would exist. I've wished for this for a long, long time. And uh, I have been explicitly keeping, I have been really explicitly keeping this in mind when designing uh, the, the components we are using to build Wikidata. And uh, the technology underlying, underlying Wikidata will make this thing a lot easier. And I really hope we will have the opportunity to implement it or someone will just grab that these libraries and do it. Having said that, but Daniel, um, we have to focus within the first year, and the natural focus is to focus on Wikipedia because this is the <coughs> far the largest project of the foundation. If somehow funding appears to follow up on this project, <laughs> and if someone of you knows someone who has a few millions lying around, <laughs> um, uh, comments would be the natural second choice. There are a few more natural second choices, I would say. <laughs> Commons is one of them. <laughs> so are you guys only looking for data to go in user boxes, or are you also looking for, say, GIS data, where you can make a, um, you can have points for, let's, roads is the big thing at the moment. So you can have a line file of all the roads in whatever, for whatever the free format you guys choose. So are you looking for that data, or are you just looking for the data to put in the user boxes? The info boxes. Um, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can respond to the technical part, but. Yeah. So, among the data types that we currently have in mind is not just geo coordinates, which would be a very early one, but we also want to look into uh, shape files, basically, okay. and have the possibility to address them. We don't know exactly how. Um, we have Katie Bill Filbert on our team, and she has been working with um, OpenStreetMaps for a long time. And we expect that there will be, um, I mean, it's obvious that there is OpenStreetMaps already and we don't, have to, uh, uh, we don't have to play in their turf. But there's an obvious connection between what we can have in Wikidata and what OpenStreetMap has to offer. And we'll see how this works out. We don't know exactly how it is. And if you are interested in that, I welcome you very much to the list to actually join in the discussion because there will be uh, one coming up probably towards in the, uh, the fall of this year. My name is David Thompson. Uh, I'm from Philadelphia, and I do, have done a lot of editing on Philadelphia and Pennsylvania articles, places. And when you talk about the info boxes, uh, I would mention that I was one of the census takers in Philadelphia back 2010. But most articles that we look at do not have census data beyond 200. 2000. Some of them are 1990. And somehow you're going to link up the info boxes uh, to census data so that we know how many people are really there in 2010. Uh, tell me more about how this info box thing is going to connect to your databases. And is population one of the things you're going to give us? What, what are you going to give us? And how will that ever happen? <laughs> will you do it on a on an overall basis from the top down and do everything in the whole United States? Or what's going to happen? Maybe even more than the US? <laughs> <laughs> and maybe, maybe other places too <laughs> that have census data from other years, but whatever. So, okay. so tell us about how this is ever going to happen and who's going to do it? Pe people are going to do it, just like on Wikipedia. Um, this is. Um, this is a pretty quick, frequent question. The fresh question of whether we are going to import large bodies of uh, existing public domain data into, into Wikidata. And the short answer is we are not going to do it, but the community might. Um, just on Wikipedia, you may find some place where you can get large amounts of texts about a variety of things and the community may decide that they want to import it and use it or they may, may decide to not do that. Um, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I would be very careful to about importing very large amounts of data early on because there will simply not be, not be enough people there to curate that data. Uh, w the idea is not to collect as much data on our side as possible but to make the data we have more useful and, uh, well, more useful inside the project because you can use it not only on one wiki, but on all of our wikis. And also uh, to make it available in a machine-readable way to third parties. 
So uh, it is up to the community where the data comes from, and it is up to the community what kind of data will exist about what kind of item. Um, I very much expect that we will see population data about a lot of places, um, just as we see them now in info boxes, and it will be easier to maintain this for not only the English language Wikipedia, but people will be able to enter it once and make it show on 200, 250, 280 Wikipedias at once. So that lowers the maintenance effort and allows people to work more efficiently. And so it, I hope it will also mean that the data will be more up to date. Just want to add a little bit, a, a personal piece of that. I come from a little village in Croatia that has a, pol a population of 130 people. And um, I recently was actually doing some Wikipedia work on the island where I come from, on those villages where they are. And I discovered that on the Slovak Wikipedia, of all places, there has been census data about this village for the last 130 years. And um, this wasn't available on the Croatian Wikipedia or on the English one or anything. It was just sitting there in a Slovak one. And so it was a beautiful piece of information that I couldn't find anywhere else. They had, and they had the references and everything. And I could just take this and actually bring this to the other languages. And this is one of the things that don't, wouldn't go unnoticed anymore, but would be available for all, um, for all the projects to see. I have a question about internationalization, so I don't know who to address it to, but um, I assume it's a uh, person uh, with software, um, uh, Daniel. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm bad with names. Yes. Don't worry. Okay. I deal with very like low level information like uh, UTF-8 and internationalized resource identifiers and persistent identifiers. Uh, the Wikipedias out there, some support internationalized IRIs, some support URIs, some cannot be dereferenceable. So, so you have that universe out there. So when you were talking about interlinks, and particularly to other languages and others, are you considering this uh, in, in your software design or system? Uh, we, we have been considering this very much, and we have been working very hard over the le last couple of months to make, uh, to make this work. Um, the information items on, on Wikidata, basically the topics of Wikipedia articles, we call them data items, have unique numerical nonsensical IDs. They are just, these are just the can canonical IDs. Um, they can be used in URIs and URLs to get the data. They're not very pretty, but they will always work. They will never change. Uh, and they, they are also used internally to cross-reference. The reference to Wikipedia articles, of course, uses the title of the Wikipedia articles, which are internationalized by nature. Um, they can change when pa pages are moved, and that may create inconsistencies, just as we see that now on, on Wikipedia with interlanguage links and links in general. Uh, this is a problem that will be solved in exactly the same way it is solved now on Wikipedia by people. Uh, we can make it a little bit easier, maybe, but well, we, we can guess what people mean when they move a page. Um, if you have a, a data item about some city, then you have the ID. You will have labels, basically names and aliases in several languages for that thing. The labels, of course, are not, are not unique. They cannot be used to actually address that item. They can be used in a search, but not really to, to identify anything. Um, we, ha we are also supporting a, a freeform description of the item to disambiguate. So if you search for Berlin, you will, of course, get Berlin in Germany, but also, I don't know, 12 places or whatever in the United States. And each one will be identified uh, to the user, to the reader in a search result and so on uh, by a short description, like you see them on disambiguation pages in Wikipedia. I hope that answered your question.
My name is Max Klein and I'm uh, representing OCLC, which is a really large library metadata company. And I've been contacting the mailing list and I've also seen once I've been on that mailing list, there are a lot of other people uh, that want to do large scale data donation. And uh, you've said that you, you um, Daniel, that you don't uh, necessarily agree with the large data at the beginning, but of course that's a community decision. So the big uh, nebulous floating <coughs> word here is community. And if I go to the wikidata.org website, which was a recent release, there's just a splash page there that, re re that redirects me to Meta. So what I want to know is, um, besides checking the API now and, and doing that, I really want to get involved in the community, but there's not even a wiki there where I can start discussing community. So. I feel like on behalf of a lot of people, I want to know what you're going to do to start um, uh, making a community discussion available for those sorts of people. So um, on Meta, as you, as you said, um, there, there is, that is the main page where um, we are collecting uh, the things we're working on, where we're collecting um, the stuff we need input on, and so on. Um, there's a, actually quite a bit of um, discussions already going on about mock-ups and um, our API uh, proposal and so on. So this is the stuff that is urgent for, for us right now. Um, of course, um, once um, it's out there, the first phase is deployed, I assume a lot more people will um, notice uh, Wikidata, of course, uh, and um, want to know more about it and want to get more involved. and. Um, also have a have a stake in the discussion, so I assume uh, a lot more will happen then. Um, yeah. I well, once the thing is useful, people use it, and once people use it, there will be a community. Uh, I think it will take a year or so before we can actually talk about an actual Wikidata community. Right now, we have a few people on the mailing list that are having discussions about a vari variety of things, but there is no real user base of the place yet because it's not there yet. So I, I really think this, um, decisions about this kind of thing will take place in a year, in a year and a half. But uh, bibliographic metadata is special in one respect. Um, every statement on Wikidata, every I don't know, population, every shoe size of a celebrity, every what <laughs> whatever, um, it's supposed to have a source, or at least one source. And to in, in order to provide that source, it would, of course, be tremendously useful to be able to use exec uh, existing uh, bibliographic metadata from whatever li um, national or local or international organizations uh, have them. So one thing that I am looking into is um, using web APIs provided by such institutions to basically pull in that metadata on demand when people want to uh, reference the source of whatever they're stating. Uh, hi, my name's Ian. Uh, I'm from the language education community, and I'm wondering when you talk about uh, being able to share the data between the different language communities and share the, you know, the relevant sources um, about the different sort of intractable, we don't all speak the same language issue of referring to those sources and being able to verify or understand where the material from the data comes from. And I'm wondering if, in addition to being able to uniquely identify the particular article and the you know, relevant uh, information about it, is there any uh, movement or idea on trying to get at least the description or identification of the sources that go along with the data to also be translatable or you know multi-referenceable so that when I come to the population of blah Berlin in the US and I speak only Portuguese, there's an easier way for me to recognize that the source you are citing is US census data uh, or otherwise learn that this comes from something like a reliable source as opposed to US weekly tabloid publications, which <laughs> as you know, not a native speaker, it's difficult to distinguish. They both have US in the title. 
So, <laughs> <laughs> so the current plan is to have the sources be items themselves, and this and thus be fully translatable as well. So the the publication of the U.S. census data would be translated to Portuguese, to Spanish, and so on as a label, and refer to the same item in this case. And um, so this kind of information will be available. Translating the source itself is obviously not part of our mission, yeah. um, but the, um, this would actually be something that, in the long run, I would see a connection to Wikisource in this case, after seeing the presentations earlier, which really amazed me, by the way. It's, it's actually an interesting uh, philosophical question whether it is useful or uh, appropriate to, to, to translate book titles used in citations. Yeah, and the, <laughs> the translation element is not inherent but some way of indicating and if the the sources themselves are items then the free form descriptions or other metadata to indicate that yes this is this kind of source <laughs> you can you know, check it out thank you hi i'm christian i'm from wikimedia italia i wanted to know if you plan to have some you know quality assessment of the data itself you know you have an item with lots of data in it and if there is some way to give feedback on the quality of the data itself. I know it can sound a little bit silly question because it's a data, what <laughs> kind of quality you could, <laughs> but, but the point is um, maybe it's useful to, you know, can say, well, we have the uh, population data for this city, which comes only from uh, newspapers and uh, weekly m US <laughs> magazines and so maybe we can say this is not so high quality data uh, if you plan to have such a system so yes we do um, this is not a silly question at all actually this is one of the crucial questions that we have to answer um, the thing is that a population a city like Mumbai has numerous numbers of populations and um, there needs to be some way actually to try to manage them. And this is probably a part of Wikidata that is going to be changing later according to what we actually see, how, the, um, how this is being used and everything. The current first plan that we have drafted is to have three ranks of statements. The first rank being something like a default value when you just ask for the population or something and um, then you get it. It doesn't necessarily have to be one single statement. It could be like two or three of them. But these are the values that we generally use if you don't specify anything else. Then there is a rank for other s data that is considered okay. Luckily, it was empty. Um, so uh, not a second rank of data that is considered okay, which is probably uh, which is fine, and so on. And then there's a third rank of state uh, of statements which are considered probably not so okay, but let's keep them for completeness sake. So there are things, for example, actually typos in publications that people might source. There are numbers that are obviously wrong. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I said I come from Croatia, so we recently had a war, and there are some sources who, are, who I wouldn't be considering too trustworthy, actually, on the data at all. Um, so, but you still would like to have those for completeness sakes, and actually it helps a lot to figure out that those kind of data sources are not good. But this is actually a place where there will be discussions in the community, where there will be edit wars about how to rank those statements and so on. Um, I'm seeing it already happening. Um, <laughs> but that's a thing, that's, that's a fight we will need to have at some point, um, and that I'm afraid we cannot skip over that. So we have this simple si system for now. We will see how it works out. We will monitor it closely, and we will f uh, try to figure out if we need to do something else in the future. There is one aspect of this I would like to mention. Um, there is a, a whole set of data that will typically be neither the default nor deprecated or, or considered wrong. Uh, that's historical data. Right. Per default, I want the mo most current information, but I would also want the population data from two years ago, five years ago, a hundred years ago, and that would be in the the normal, the other statements, and will be would be accessible and might even be used at some point in the future to automatically to automatically generate charts and so on. Yeah. Hi. Um, 
so I do a lot of anti-vandalism work on English Wikipedia, and one of the places where we see a lot of vandalism is um, frequently used tem templates that are being transcluded in a lot of different places. And I sort of wonder with Wikidata, I realize that this is sort of up to the community to some degree, but is there any sort of built-in security against people who are maliciously <coughs> going to be trying to change something so that it's suddenly um, sort of sent to 200 different Wikipedias all at once? Because I see that to be an issue that could arise. Okay. Um, well, first of all, uh, the, the usual page protection mechanisms will be available. Uh, w data items are technically wiki pages. They work exactly the same way. They have the same history, the same protection button, same talk page, all of that. You can watch items on, and so on. S same thing. Um, and the other thing is when a data item is used on, on a Wikipedia page and you're watching that Wikipedia page, you will be notified whenever the data changes. So that stuff goes to the recent changes table, it shows up on recent changes, it shows up in watch lists, and hopefully we can even make it happen that it will be recorded in the page history. And because this is so, um, currently, if someone, if someone changes a template that is used 10,000 times, only the people watching the template will notice people watching the pages will not. Uh, with Wikidata, every person watching any of the articles in any of the 200 languages will notice. So I think that there is much more attention and much more protection against vandalism this way. Okay, and then if I could just sort of follow up. Um, sort of on English Wikipedia, at least, the high use templates are generally protected. Um, on Wikidata, it seems like almost all the data would be equivalent to a high use template where it's just gonna all be used in many different places. So are we going to have to see like much of this data being protected, do you think? Or do you think there's going to be sort of an easier way just to do it? So um, having page-wide protection, meaning for a full item, is just the first step because we take it because uh, MediaWiki already offers that. The advantage that we can use is actually that we can have a more fine-grained uh, protection mechanism down to the statement levels, basically, if you want to. We could have that. So you could only protect, for example, the population of um, a country, uh, but leave the other ones open and so on for editing and so on. The other thing that we are debating inside, and which is not very, um, and which is uh, contentious in, inside the team as well right now, is um, the idea of having statements being not editable at all. Once you enter a statement saying like, the population of the city is according to this source, three and a half million, then you can delete the statement, you can create new statements, but editing the statement doesn't actually that ma make that much sense because this is just one piece of data. And well, if there was a typo, okay, you could maybe um, edit it and change it again. But once you give sources to it, um, what is uh, what's actually the point of actually changing the data? That's something that um, when I watch uh, Wikipedia articles I actually notice that people simply change a sentence but leave the references inside, which makes the whole thing look like it's, wow, there's references and it says that. And you actually look in the references, no, it doesn't. It says what it was there in the previous version. So one of the ideas that we're currently floating as said is to actually not allow to edit um, statements, but rather to add new statements, to retreat them, and then it depends on the other uh, mechanisms of protection. But this is something that we have to work out um, with how the community actually works and how the things need it. As usual, we would like to have as little protection as possible, yeah. but uh, for fighting vandals, it might be necessary to introduce um, system. And in Wikidata, we have the chance of having more fine-grained systems than on Wikipedia, which is nice. Okay, thank you. There's, there's actually one thing I would like to mention. Um, my favorite model of protection is let everyone add statements, but let only I don't know, trusted users, make them default. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyone can add another, uh, another value for the population, but if there is always a, a value marked as the default value, then someone who is <coughs> trusted would have to promote the new value to, the, to, the, uh, to, to be a default. This, is, this would work a little bit like the, uh, like the cited revisions. Or pending changes. Pending changes, whatever you want. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dan Eldridge. I'm here from Wikimedia New York. Um, counting can be hard, and agreeing on numbers from population can be very difficult. 
it seems that even agreeing upon the max maximum occupancy Maximum, <laughs> maximum occupancy of this room <laughs> is a question. Because the sign over there says, room 307, maximum occupancy, 30 to 125 people. <laughs> 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 so perhaps I could, the notion of a range of numbers for things that <laughs> seem to be uh, one number, like population, is not a silly thing. I mean, I, I know many cities in the U.S., local lo uh, lo localities disagree upon the federal census numbers, but that's um, info boxes. People, some people seem to go out of their mind uh, thinking the info box is too long and there are too many things in the info box. I tend to disagree with that um, and that more is better or can be better at least, not always better. Um, no, I'll leave it there. I, I, do you want to? Be? Okay. There's uh, plenty of stuff to say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you know, you were talking about several things actually. So um, I just quickly go through them. Um, so the first thing that you said is the people disagree on um, numbers, is, uh, like like this. And um, yes, the, so, so one of the most important things about Wikidata is that Wikidata is not about the truth. Wikidata is about what reliable sources say about this. So if there is a reliable source, like this sign saying about the <laughs> maximum occupancy of room. That's what you should cite, and not what you come up with original research right, of numbers. So, so the numbers might be the, the population of this loca location might be the low, the high, and the you know, expected. Um, so, th so this, this is the first part. So we, we look about what sources are saying about that. The second one about ranges. Yes, we're thinking about not having necessarily just have to have completely exact numbers, but we're thinking about things like accuracy um, and, um, and, r and ranges as well. As this is especially important for historical data, obviously, where you have estimates. Sure, we can agree on the difference. <laughs> 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 and about info boxes. Yeah, OK, this, is, this actually ties in again with the ranks. Mm -hmm. um, when I, usually in the info box, you would see the default value. If there are multiple default values for a property that is not inherently uh, multi-value, then you would have. <laughs> no, 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 yes. About, um, uh, adding fields to info boxes, um, adding more data and more fields to them. So, for example, yes. on, the, on the college and university info box, there is no field for newspaper, but there is a free text field. So, I suggested that we add a newspaper field and got shot down by people saying, oh no, there are too many fields in this info box a template already, and we don't want to have info box creep. Yes, that, is so not a, that is not a problem for Wikidata at all, because no, I, it I is, understand, I, understand. I mean, that, <laughs> did you have to take that to the people making the info boxes. That right. is so really, is, I mean, so hands off. So again, we, you, we punt and say, leave it to the community. Yeah, leave it to the it local to the community. community. The, the people who make the page decide what goes on the page. Right, I mean, right. right. Really but really what about, about the range? <laughs> if there are multiple, if there are multiple default values, possibly qualified in, in different ways, I, I would be very interested how this comes to pass. Maybe it is, it is maybe it's like for, for stand-up meetings or for cocktail parties or for whatever, right. So if we have these qualifiers, no, no, but if, if we actually know the qualifiers that, um, that makes these numbers real, then we can actually put these qualifiers on the actual data points. And when I say, okay, give me, give me, the, de give me the default value, the different default values would be collated into a range and, would be and you would be able to actually see why that is so. Yeah. Well, just also just the United States Declaration of Independence, <laughs> partly, we take these truths to be self-evident. <laughs> 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 we take this to be self-evident. Um, self-evident is actually a valid <laughs> source. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Also, also so not, just just quickly, um, also not everything that is inside of Wikidata has to be necessarily been shown in every info box. So if the English community decides that a newspaper should be something that is in the info box for colleges, this doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, French uh, Wikipedia has to agree. So there can be data inside the uh, Wikidata which is not shown in the respective okay, info but box. The source for the max occupancy in the room, that's self-evident. That's a direct observation. Anyone can glue signs to walls. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, uh, uh, on the same topic of uh, an, an example uh, that, that I've dealt with personally as an editor that I'm wondering how the Wikidata will affect this. 
Um, I edit uh, primarily the, the early years section of an article on Frederick Douglass. And there are repeated low intensity edit wars that go on about what year he was born. 1817 and then it gets changed to 1818 and then it gets changed back to 1817 and then back to 1818. You could find, I don't know whether it's 20 or 30 or 100 websites that will give 1817 and a like number that will say 1818. Finally, I, I decided to, you know, add to that section of the article and state that Frederick Douglass didn't know when he was born. And I quote <laughs> his autobiography, okay? And so then it says, you know, probably 1817 or 1818. The info box, I don't remember which date it says currently. It may have changed in the last hour. But I decided to hell with it, and I leave that alone because people will keep changing it, and they'll have multiple citations to prove their point. What will Wikidata do with this? If, if you look at the um, data model specification for Wikidata, you will notice that it is insanely complex, and this is why, because we really want to be able to model this. We will be able to actually represent all of this. We will be able to represent that there are X, th this number of uh, web pages cite, um, stating one thing with all the links and a number of pages stating the other thing with all the links. And we will be able to represent that it is actually unknown according to a specific source. We will actually be able to reference the, the, the value as unknown or fuzzy and give the autobiography as a source. And we will be able to show all of this in an in info box with a neat little arrow saying more information. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm going into too much detail with this question, but uh, in the first phase, uh, we will have to add the data and items on the website, in the Wikidata website. And I was wondering if uh, um, you have already, you know, um, thought some details about this insertion process and you can share with us. Because I, I was thinking, uh, okay, I want to insert a new city on Wikidata. So I go on the page, uh, what I find? Uh, a new city model to uh, which all the statements uh, one usually would expect uh, for a city and I have only to fill the fields and... Yeah, so we're fighting about this still. <laughs> 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 so there are opinions that think that um, something like a template for a city is a good idea. There are opinions, <coughs> notably mine, that think <laughs> that um, uh, we should just have items and then you add anything you want to it. Um, there are things that are in the middle ground to saying like, okay, well, we can have something like maybe a template overlay um, and so on and so on. So there are, we don't know yet. So the best way to actually have this is I invite you to discuss this topic with us um, because seriously, we haven't figured it out yet. We have a lot of ideas and we can argue for them for a long time and I actually would like to not do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick, quick idea and, and a very nice way to do this is create another item like that one and then it prompts you for all the properties that are, are the other items. Oh. I'm user Graham87, and I've, in the past six months, I've been editing lots of articles about Australian Paralympic athletes. Now, I've been using the International Paralympic Committee database as a, as a primary source for a lot of these um, athletes. And before 1988, a lot of the first names aren't listed. So I've been going into articles, say, about... Um, swimming at the 1964 Summer Paralympics. And I've been adding first names to the English articles. And then I discovered that there were actually articles about the same topics in Frisian and Dutch. So I've had to go in and um, edit the same information in three different language Wikipedias. I think Wikidata would be great 
<laughs> I could put all that information in Wikidata and just edit it once. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> a quick follow-up it's um so for a different example wiki source you have a thing if we're going to use the export tool to make the file in an epub format will wikidata be able to attach the dublin core metadata when you're creating a new file off, off a tool like that it will be possible to use it like this but Wikisource, again, is not on our timeline for the first year. Um, but we will provide all the interfaces, and um, everything is open source. So yes, I guess someone can use it exactly for that, and I would love to see it happen. <laughs> we actually are running out of time. Uh, I believe it's 10. We are at the end of, of our for a session, so um, sorry about that. Uh, I see there are still two uh, questions, but uh, we are um, everybody here is available uh, after this. So I'd like to thank you, everyone, and please follow uh, Wikidata closely and uh, get involved and uh, get get heard. Um, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs>